Hi guys, this is Matt Tudor Berry and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about caloric testing. So caloric testing is, it's a test of our vestibulo-ocular reflexes. Um, and it's done to assess damage to a patient's brain stem or their vestibular system. Um, how we do it is we actually do it by delivering hot or cold water into our patient's ear canal and then checking for nystagmus in the eyes. What is nystagmus? Nystagmus is uncontrolled and repetitive movements of the eyes. It can be horizontal or it can be vertical. We can see um, nystagmus in certain neurological conditions, in metabolic disorders, or also um, in um, certain drug-induced conditions. So let's get right into caloric testing. Um, first, we have to understand how a nystagmus works. Remember that nystagmus, or that uncontrolled repetitive movement of the eyes, has a slow phase in one direction which is also called the pursuit, followed by a fast phase in the opposite direction, which is called the saccade. So we have a slow phase of both eyes looking in one direction, followed by a quick, fast phase of the eye looking in the opposite direction. Okay, so how do we know the directions in which the eyes are going to move? And let's start by looking at what we should be seeing in a healthy patient. Okay, so you're going to do a healthy patient. We're going to do a patient who is in coma, and we're going to do a patient with a full brainstem lesion. Healthy, coma, and a brainstem lesion. In a healthy patient, we have both the slow and the fast phase of the nystagmus preserved. So we see both the slow phase and the fast phase. The acronym that we're going to be using for the direction of the nystagmus based on whether we're adding hot water or cold water is GAUS, cold opposite, warm same, okay? That means this is my patient's eyes, this is their ear, this is the right side, this is the left side, and let's say I add warm water on the patient's right side the nystagmus should end by looking at the same side. That means the slow phase would go towards the left, followed by my fast phase ending on the right side. So my slow phase or my pursuit, and my fast phase or my saccade um, looking to my right ear. So the eyes should end up on the same side. Let's do another example. If I take cold water in my patient's left ear, my eye should end up looking on the opposite side. That means my the fast phase should end up looking to the right. My eye should end up looking away from the cold water. That means in this case again, my fast phase has to end on the right side. That means my slow phase is actually towards the left. Okay, sorry about that. I hope you can see this now. Okay, hopefully you can see this now. I realized that was being cut off from the screen. So let's just draw this again. If I add cold water on the left, I want to make sure that my eyes right end up on the opposite side. So my eyes will end up on the right side. That means the fast phase on the right side. And the slow phase one to the left okay so that's how you work um, with this acronym for healthy patients now what happens in uh, if someone is in coma but their brainstem is intact okay if someone is in coma they lose some higher cortical functioning but the brainstem is intact so in this case these patients 
maintain the slow phase of the nystagmus, but they lose the fast phase. They're only left with, with the slow phase of nystagmus, okay? So what we're going to see here is actually the acronym would be the opposite of what we saw in healthy patients. It's actually going to switch. It's going to be cold same and warm opposite. Okay, and let's see how that works. And this should make sense once we look at the examples. This is my ears. This is my eyes. Let's say I introduce hot water in my right ear. In a normal patient, it should be warm same, but this patient lost their fast saccade. That means they're going to do the slow saccade in the opposite direction, but they won't be able to do this fast saccade coming back to the right eye. So if you add warm water, they're going to look to the opposite side. And that's how we come up with the acronym of cold, same, and warm opposite. If I add cold water in my left ear, ideally I should have had a slow phase towards the left and a fast phase towards the right, which we saw in the first example. But remember, this patient has lost the fast phase and they're only left with the slow phase towards the left ear. So cold, same same side eyes when you introduce cold water in the same side ear so that's how you use um, this acronym and hopefully it's um, easy right it's not that difficult what would you see in someone with a brainstem lesion I think this is the easiest one their brainstem is affected they have lost both the slow and the fast phase of nystagmus their eyes would stay fixed in the center and their eyes would not move in any direction. So if you see loss of nystagmus, that tells you that this patient has a brainstem lesion um, and that's how you are able to tell all of these three different patients apart from each other. And I have a nice summary slide for you that you can look at uh, while studying this or if you need to take a quick look, healthy patients use cows, comatose patients use the opposite of cows, and patient with brainstem lesion, there's no eye movement. Okay, I do have a little note here about MLF lesions. Remember, MLF lesions affect your adduction right, the effect adduction of the eyes. So let's do, let's do a quick example um, of if someone has an MLF lesion. We'll go back up here. Let's do a quick example of someone with an MLF lesion in our coma phase. So the acronym doesn't change. Now I say I introduce cold water in the patient's right ear canal. According to the, and in this patient is in coma. So according to the acronym, both my eyes should look to the same side or the right side. Now this eye is looking, and this is our nose here. The right eye is looking away from the nose. So this is called abduction of the eyes. The left eye is looking towards the nose. This is called ADD or adduction of my left eye. Okay, adduction, it's controlled by your oculomotor nerve three using your medial rectus muscle. And abduction is controlled by your lateral rectus using your cranial nerve six. MLF lesion always impacts adduction of the opposite eye. So cranial nerve six coming to this lateral rectus here is intact, but cranial nerve three coming from the right side to this medial rectus on the left side has been impacted. Our MLF 
has been impacted. So what we're going to see is we're going to see that this patient will only be able to move the right eye towards the ear and would not be able to move the left eye towards the ear. So this eye is going to look dead straight, but this eye will turn and look towards the side of cold water. So the, always the eye that's adducting would look right straight ahead at you and would not move um, in case of MLF lesions. So hopefully this helps you answer some questions um, and makes this a little bit more clear. Okay, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.